What's up everybody, Clones of the Ray here playing more Pyre. When last we left off, we had uh, won Headwind's Freedom and opened up the world into Open World, which again is still a big surprise to me. Um, I imagine that's going to just make the game go quicker in general, which is exciting. Um, I mean, it's not that exciting because it means it's less time to actually play the game that I'm very much enjoying. Um, but it's still a, a really cool change of pace. Uh, that being said, we're going to get a lot more pages, I believe, uh, from here on out. Um, so if you enjoy me reading, you're going to be in for a treat in this now second half of the game, I would say, we are in. Um, not that it's divided 50-50 exactly, but I feel like definitely two stages. Um, and if you don't like listening to me read, and you're still watching this part of the LP... I don't know what you're still doing here because this game is basically me reading the whole time and then it's interspersed with like two to three minute intervals of me playing sports. But anyways, let's continue our journey. I believe we just went back to the very first um, foes we ever faced to the point that I don't even really remember them. Certainly don't remember the voice I gave them. Um, but uh, Lendl and the Accusers. I'm pretty sure the Accusers were our first. I remember hearing the team name and being like, ooh. Although to be fair, I've that's that's a lot of the team names. There's some really strong. All of the names in this game, the names for terminology and things and people and legends and locations, spot on all around. It's what this is a, this is a good game, guys. <laughs> Hey guys, come on in. Say now, whatever happened to that smiley headwind guy? Did he really get out of here like I've been hearing or what? I guess I don't get to tell him. I guess my character doesn't speak either way, but... Um, yeah, if, it's, if it says can be sold to Slug Market, I'm going to trust the game that that is the only purpose it has. So we're going to go ahead and sell this. I know I just said that, and just, I'm still holding on to this bark strip, but I'm still... I, I just, I wanna, I, I just want, I, I don't care. <laughs> oh, he actually gave his bracer back. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't assume we'll be getting Headwind again, but I guess there's a chance that like, once we start up this revolution thing, we might meet him on the other side and there might still be some uh, sports ball to go. I don't think that's the case, but just in case, I am going to hold on to that. And plus, it's, you know, a commemoration of, of our boy. Um, anyway, what else we got? That was a forget-me-not. Um, Twilight Shard. Only plus two extra damage? That's definitely not worth that. I feel like I've determined that most of these are not worth it, especially since almost all the characters are going to be getting their own special boy anyways. So I think we're going to be focusing on um, the Stardusts here. We also have uh, that that foraging gave us quite a bit of money, so why don't we just go ahead and get all of our Stardust, huh? Cool! Pleasure was all mine and dad's, you guys! And let's see who wants to talk. Oh, it's Sir Gilman. Sir Gilman is fuming in anger over something so much that you were hesitant to approach him, but you approach him anyway because the game told you there was someone to talk to in the black wagon. Exile is too light a sentence for this night! He notices you, then seizes up. He begins acting rather nonchalant, as though his outburst did not just transpire. Oh, greetings to you, noble master reader. What brings you to this night this afternoon? Ask him if everything is all right. Such a venting of emotions and calming, even for the likes of this particular worm knight. This guy was making enough of a wreck to be cause of some fair amount of concern. What's going on with you, man? You maintain a gentle tone with him and ask whether there is something he might wish to discuss or Gilman perhaps could benefit from talking through his woes. He stands there for a time, silent and dejected, but then... Master Reader, this ca knight cannot escape the horrors of his past. It seems that you would hear them. Then you would have this knight's apologies ahead of time for burdening you further with his troubles. I hope he, like, jaywalked. I hope... Like, I really want these crimes to be absolutely nothing. Having said that, here then are the troubles you requested. You are, of course, familiar with the Siege of the Spiral Sanctum. Of course. For this night, the memory of it is like a wound which will not close. The burned down remains of the old capital of the Commonwealth. The remains stand as a warning for those who would seek to spread forbidden knowledge. Oh, that's like the big... Yeah. Yeah. I, we've read about that before, I think. 
This night stood there on the front lines whilst the highway remnants descended upon us. So furious was their assault that our chain of command was ruptured instantly. We of the Sea Dominion, we require orders to perform our duty. Without such orders, why, we surely made a very easy target there that eve. One by one, then two by two, they picked us off, becoming bolder, some of them shrieking with laughter all the while. This night he saw his comrades cast aside like sea flies. How this night survived he does not know for certain, even now. Perhaps it was that he attempted to pursue and to detain his own knight commander, whom you met when you first met this knight. That caused that cursed Sir Deluge. If not for his craven cowardice, the spiral sanctum it might have held at least a while longer. But instead, we were routed. Rendered spineless both in form and deed, Sir Deluge was first to turn in flee as our chain of command crumbled. And as for this knight, he failed to catch his knight commander. He must have looked a coward too. Thus came the time for penance, and this knight, why, he insisted on the only course of action reasonable. He insisted on the sentence to the downside. And as you can plainly see, his wish was then fulfilled. How absurd that he should re-encounter his old knight commander here soon after. Thus did the knight become obliged once more to Sir Deluge. Wait, why would you become, why would you have to serve him again? Clearly he's not worth it. We took to the waters in the Sea of Solace, where soon we met the Pyre Hearts, a triumvirate exclusive to our kind. It was plain to see that they lacked wherewithal, and Sir Deluge, they thought he could provide it. Leadership they sought, and his was much too of a coward to decline. As for this knight, being of the Sea Dominion, he had little choice but to comply, or so at first he thought. When this knight, when he encountered you in the Nightwing, something awakened within him. With so little honor left to lose and so much left to gain, it became eminently clear that this knight stood a better chance within your ranks than those of Sir Deluge, and there is little left to say. This knight cannot escape his past, and yet he chooses to believe that he was spared that day not merely by coincidence. Perhaps Under King Oras yet has plans in store in which this knight may play a part. This knight he clings, however vainly, to that hope. He slithers away, his head bowed low. Seems best to leave him be for now, you sense he feels relieved at having shared all this. Cool. So I imagine that, yeah, I was about to ask if that's going to uh, boost his roster, because we actually have not learned very much about most of our uh, squad mates. Yeah. Um, but let's see what you've got. Um, Knight Aaron to the Sea Dominion, who stopped glory in the Commonwealth before he became frontline fighters and never ending war against the Harps. In this, he fared much better than most of his kind till the day of the disastrous siege of the Spiral Sanctum, where his entire regiment was destroyed in ambush and stolen soul survivors. Sir Gilman accepted the full responsibility for that. He volunteered to go into exile as penance for the failure. Crime, none. Uh, that, that doesn't count in the uh, laws of the Commonwealth as a crime. Uh, motive, not applicable. Uh, he volunteered for exile. Uh, technically did no wrong, it even says in the description. And years exiled three, just because he survived here for three years, it is a life sentence. I see. Oh, that's what it's saying. Years exiled, how, how long you spent here. Uh, cool. Um, kind of weird that I've, I've hit the S rank with Sir Gilman before, like Jodario and Ruki, but oh well. Um, we also have more pages. Let's not let them pile up too much. Let's spread these out. Wait, there's a new one in chapter one? Oh, this is just the final, the eight scribes. And the words of Golgothanian, we found each of the others in due time, by fate, not by coincidence. The wise Lu Sclerian stood among the trees, gazing at the stars, expecting us. The wild witch Milithae was so enthralled by my liege's utter transformation, she stayed her sorceries. Blessed-born Triesta swooped down upon us, but to warn of imminent attack. The many-named Jomur thus intervened and shared with us his humor and his hunt. Even the underking Ores himself sought out an audience with us. Thus we became the eight and journeyed on together. Have I read this one yet? Dang it. I missed. Dang it. Why would you start at the end when there's other... We okay. We definitely seen him. I was unable to watch. Yeah, we definitely read that one. No, I think we read this one. He, he, him, and his imp helped save the emperor. The emperor was like, "All right, now, um, we have to earn our freedom together." Essentially. Um, and so they're chilling. And then they came across more company. I see. I see. I see. Definitely don't remember what voices I gave each of the scribes, but we'll see if I can figure it out. Um, 
should have told me which ones were new. I don't, I don't know, man. I'm just going to read this one really quick in the words of Molten Millifay. The downside prairie first appears serene. It is not. The soil there accommodates only the region's brutish native vines and overbrush. The most likely food sources prove poisonous. Thus we journeyed further north. The climate there grew fouler to my senses, though the Kerr Jumur found it amenable. I feel like I've read this one already. This sprawling valley pocked with long evaporated lakes gives evidence to the monstrosities which roam this land. We found the region's western edge to be more pleasant on the whole. There we found sources of fresh water, whereas over the east we found the edge of the land's most hideous decay. Definitely have read that one. Don't, well, wait, no, that doesn't make any sense because we only have these two and I did get a new one. But I'm pretty sure we read the Mount Elodial one because we would have gotten that one right away, right? I don't know if I've read this one. Gaining the sum of the sacred Mount Elodial involved no small effort of sacrifice and sorcery in varying proportion. The energies, the mountain's energies were palpable, a sensation that we felt indescribable. The lands we stood upon were closer to the stars than to the world we knew. It was upon this highest point and all the downside that we first made efforts to concoct this tome, which you now read. It was there that we were stricken with a vision of the cycle of the rites and felt together for the first a sense of freedom unlike we, any we experienced before. But that is a subject which our comrades will limit in greater detail. Now I feel like I may have already read that one before. I don't know. It's all red now. It's been red. Okay, that little strum makes me feel like this is definitely a new page. So that's going to be our guiding, our guiding audio cue. In the words of Lou Sclurian, I oftentimes think the carapace of the hive titan Biolanthius shall be an everlasting blemish on an almost splendid bit of land, but Jomur in his brashness felled the monster with a certain flare. Then the moon shone through the ridges of the massive carapace and shined upon the pooling ichor, turning it into the freshest necker, nectar ever to be tasted. The spring shall flow eternally, and those who walk within it shall experience the resplendent glory of the land. The stars began to fall there in the spring with regularity, and we now know how soon again that they shall do so, and we wish for you to see it for yourself. Um, yeah, we definitely read that one. Yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna solely rely on whether or not I can hear a fancy little strumming noise. Cool. We'll get there. I'll also just try to keep track every time I see a pop up. Um, I'll keep I'll keep count. Um, anyways, let's actually do some sports, huh? Oh wait, hang on. Let's apply some stardust. I think we can do that during the rites as well, but. Um, I'm going to forget. Um, uh, Kasser are farther and faster than usual. Let's go and bump that up. Uh, let's go and bump that up a little bit. Um, after Rookie cast it lingers. Um, it can bounce off of object surfaces. I feel like I don't use her aura very often, so I don't know how useful it's going to be. Do we have a plus one? Yeah, let's go. Let's give you a plus. Hmm. Oh right. Why would you couldn't? You can't level up a thing that's just it bounces unless it was like bounces off more things. Uh, makes you faster. Very very good for uh, Tizo. Um, that's the money. See, I feel like it's not worth it to uh, uh, up this one because I feel like I'm not going to be killing thirteen enemies in one match. So I'm not going to do that one anymore. Um, I do like that one. We're actually going to level that one up with one of our one of our two Zs at the very least. Um, not that I've been using Pamatha too much, but I don't know. We'll try to bump it up. Um, and you can get a plus two, and then we're going to hold on to our plus three and plus one just to just to see if we get any more uh, any more cool ones. Ooh, you can bounce it around. That's fun. Give us a little bit of the music. That's fun. Anyways, let's do some sports now. 
if you're curious why I'm holding on to Stardust, even though that doesn't seem very uh, uh, fruitful, it's because if I get more special talismans that only go f per each character, and those would be helpful by powering them up, I want to have a little Stardust on hand to give it a little bit of juice. Uh, here among the rocky pathways of the spring of Jomor, you await the signal of the stars. There's no sign yet of your expected adversaries, the accusers. Then the little imp Tizo flutters up to you. <laughs> Tizo cautions you that he has some history with your next adversary, Lendell. Because I don't think Tizo was with us the first time we came uh, through these guys. <laughs> Tizo seems to be indicating that Lendell has a personal vendetta against him. But before we can explain anything further, the stars begin to call out to you. I wonder if that means Tizo will not want to participate or will very much want to participate. I'm realizing that going with the gut instinct of... Uh, Ever persevering, aren't yes, we? very much so. Well then, rejoice, because the cycle of the rites begins anew. Perhaps you'll liberate another soon enough. Your chosen adversaries here shall be... The Accusers. Reduce their flame to ash, just as you did when last you met. Now, who exactly shall oppose them? Your companions are assembled and ready for the rest to commence. However, there's still no sign of your adversaries, the accusers. The accusers. Little Imp Tizo screeches, screeches something, cautioning you all to stay alert. But then, someone leaps forth from the shadows. He grabs at his mask. Aha! Caught you, you miserable beast! I knew it! After all this time, I knew that you were still among their ranks. Crack! Tizo is angry to have stumbled into an apparent trap laid for him by Landell. Silence, fiend. You robbed me of my freedom, my dignity. Your evil shall be ended here and now, and you, Nightwing, shall not deny me thus again. Come then, my accusers, for we face again none other than the spawn of the accursed imp Haub the Swallow. Let us show him now that he is a disgrace. Tizo whistles something angry back at him. Whatever transpired between him and Lendell in the past, Lendell evidently has not let it go. Boo! That's cheap when you give your fire extra power. Come, accusers, let us make clear to those fools that we are stronger now than ever. You sense Lindell speaks the truth. The accusers are more capable than before. Each time you face Tremor, they gain talismans and masteries. That's interesting. Special proficiencies. Do not underestimate them, is my choice going forward. Who shall conduct the right? Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Because I keep forgetting to do this. We have Lindell, who has... Um, that's so what gives him the extra points. And um, he regenerates stamina quickly. Okay, Vispa, another nomad, um, travels on a wider line than usual and has more stamina. Um, also gives a little extra health. Also gives a little extra health. Uh, Darben um, has pretty much the same thing as uh, Vispa. I uh, feel like it makes sense to put Tizo in here. Yeah. Tizo. We should get some Pamatha action in there since she needs to get some experience at some point. And Sir Gilman has a little bit of built-up inspiration. I think they just gain that when they don't fight, though. So I'm not too concerned about paying that off immediately. Dodario also has some. Oh, she's unwilling. Oh! <laughs> she refused to participate in the rites with Pamatha. Oh, that's great. Ah, uh, I want to... I, I want to... Uh, uh, really give my girl the XP she can, but... I mean, that's true to character. I can't even blame you. So let's go with Gilman. This is an odd matching. These are three players that I'm not particularly experienced with. This knight shall not stand idly by while the diminutive Tizo suffers such slurs. Don't call him diminutive, man. Knight wings. The wicked fiend you serve is an affront. He denied my rightful freedom in my moment of triumph. I shall never forgive him or any of you. 
Yeah, well, you're just three headwinds put to get stacked up in a trench coat. Begin. Glory to the night wings, first of all. Hug. I fly. Resplendent. Flying is good. These flying characters, I'm okay with them. Hold still, you misbegotten little pox. We are not finished with you yet. <laughs> Tizo utters at Lindell a slew of the absolute worst imp profanity. Your curses could not possibly affect me any further, you foul spawn, for you have taken everything from me already. But if I am to be trapped in this forsaken hole with you for the remainder of my days, then I shall see to it that yours shall be as doleful as my own. Lendl certainly enjoys a rousing speech. The talk means nothing in the rights. The Gilman plunges into the fire. The Nightwing's pyre burns brighter for now. Sure does. Goodbye. Ah, uh, went too soon. That's fine. I like this speed build I've got going. It's pretty good, especially against these nomads. Be gone. Tizo takes the They're also not very good at jumping, I am figuring out. <laughs> Which is fine by me, my friends. Okay, that's fair. Careless. Yeah, no. You're not. Defense is very easy against nomads, I'm figuring out. Offense is not very difficult either. <laughs> I, um, I, playing against the accusers is not making me regret sending Hedwin over. Um, I'll be real with you. I'm, I'm okay with that decision when I'm seeing what three headwinds can do against me. Oh, he jumped. That's fine. Okay, alright, fair, fair, fair. I thought they had you there. Why? The orb engulfed in fire. Yeah, you guys, uh, I appreciate that you're stronger than you were before, but, uh, oh, that counted. Man, the announcer effing just loves his job. See you later, Evers. <laughs> oh, it's so OP just being able to fly straight over them. Their adversaries proved no match for them. Yeah, that was really easy. The <laughs> right. I get that they're like the first team, so even after the upgrade, they're probably not supposed to be the toughest. But uh, yeah, that was fun. Screeha! Tizo is very pleased that you prevailed, but wishes to make a quick exit at this time. Blast! Where did he go? Where did he go? That infernal imp. It is a monster in disguise, a fiend. Come forth to torment me until the day I die. die. Lendel Lendel storms, storms, off. storms off in a fit of anger. Tizo reappears once the coast is clear and expresses his gratitude again. What Lendel said before, if Tizo truly is a descendant of Haub the Swallow, then he has quite the legacy to live up to. He's living up to it pretty well. Tizo's kind of a boss. Now, in the wisdom of the scribes. Will he get it? Yeah! So grateful is this knight for such a glorious occasion that he is giving strong consideration to performing here and now the forbidden dance of the Sea Dominion! But I won't, because it's forbidden. Alright, so we got... Um, bring it, uh, 
uh, comrade back, which again, I don't think is too helpful. While Sir Gilman's allies are banished, he moves faster than usual and temporarily has infinite stamina. The Underking was revered for having vanquished more worm knights than any other of his kind. Um, once per round, when saluting his adversary, Sir Gilman freezes all exiles for three seconds. Wait, all exiles, including my teammates? Um, uh, Under King Oris was known for as many boasts, although the vast majority were not far off the mark. Okay, I do need to remember to salute more often, because I love that this game as a taunt feature, and I keep forgetting it's a thing. That being said, I'm not going to remember that often enough for that skill to come in handy. I do like this um, um, kind of second wing wind mechanic of everyone else is down, it's all down to Gilman. Um, he can move with infinite stamina, and it's just really fast. I think that's pretty cool. So I'm going with that. You go? Oh, you weren't even level two. The exiled Tamitha perhaps can learn the errors of her kind. Well, Tamitha, soon I'll be catching up with you at this, whether you like it or not. All right, what you got? What you got? Um... Wings of the Matriarch, enhancing the harp's swiftness and mobility. When Triesta Tethys sled her people to the mountains, they began to train themselves in ways to survive. Enhancing the harp's aggressive capabilities, the Highwinger who nearly destroyed after Saint Triesta left them, those who remained grew strong. Winged Fury, for five seconds after banishing the adversary, Pamath moves 30% faster than usual. Often did the Matriarch assuage her sister's rise in anger and compel them not to war upon the wingless. Or Swift Flight, while flying Pamath moves faster than usual. Uh, there were none who could outpace the Matriarch Triesta Tethys as she soared across the sky. So basically, fly faster or go faster after killing someone. I feel like fly faster because I know I'm going to be flying all the time. I might not be killing people with Tamitha all the time, so... The holy power of the eldest I wish you told me how much, though. The other one told me 30%. This one's just vaguely faster. But, uh, yeah. Until the stars align. You return to the wagon after you and your fellow exiles vanquish the accusers and find Volfred waiting for you there. Didn't you leave? This is he's he's come back now, right? There's a return happening here. Well done back there, my girl. You are serving your companions well. Now then, I have something that I wish to share with share you if you've a moment. We have discussed, we have discussed the, plan. the plan of which we're all a part, which is now at thirty two percent. Okay, every win does bump it up a little bit, that's nice. Um, I have a means of measuring our progress toward the goal of it. You just have to hover over the word. I'd like for you to have a look at it. First, let's determine where the rights may take us next. Look forth. I expect you shall see again. You shall again see several shining stars where once you saw but one. Gaze again to the darkness of night. The scribe stars beckon. Why do? What? Can't I just go wherever I am want? <laughs> oh no! I don't get to choose from all of them every. T Wait, maybe I do. I get several options, it would seem. Several shining stars. A trick of the eye or the will of the scribes, who can say? I, too, once gained this newfound vision many years ago, following my first liberation rite. I believe only we of the Nightwings have this gift. I realize that in choosing whom the Nightwing confront in each rite, we in turn influence which triumphant we face when the time comes for someone to be set free. Okay, so maybe it's whoever we save for last? The object I invite you to use contains further detail. Henceforth, you may use Volfrit's Planner to see your current progress, an object that shows the relative standings between the nine triumphants and the right. Whichever triumphant carries the most favor shall confront the Nightwings for Gen 3. Okay, so whoever we don't kick their butts hard enough, look upon it now. Oh boy, numbers! <laughs> Using Volfrit's planner, you may assess your progress towards your ultimate goal, as well as check the current standings of your adversaries. Volfrit should keep this information up to date for the remainder of your quest. You may look over it now or anytime in the Black Wagon or while searching the stars. That's cool. Rights till next liberation. We don't know, but we know it will be sooner than before. Liberation rights conducted. One additional exiles required. What? Number of additional exiles required to join the Nightwings and fulfill a key aspect of the plan. Okay, so there's one more we haven't gotten yet, or is that because Hedwin went away? 
Total rights, nine. Exiles liberated, one. Probability of success, 32. Oh man, there's an effing calendar. Lundium, the 31st of 8th moon, 837 AS. At long last, the plan is well underway. The cycle of the rites turns quickly for the time. We soon should have another stab upon the fall of Solium. Solium. So yeah, we're 9-0. We're doing pretty good. Um, ours is the triumvirate against which all others are judged. I don't like that Vulfrid is dead. I know it can't be my face, but... Come on, man. Okay, so we have infinite favor, it would seem. Um, probably because we always, we, we'll always get to be part of the liberation, right? It's just a matter of who gets to go against us. Um, so up at the top, recently rising, we have Essence, the Harps, prisoners of war whose hatred for the Commonwealth runs deep. Next up, the Fate. They cling to the belief that the scribes are watching over them. Next up, the Distance. Chaotic firebrands and concerned about what is at stake in all this. The Withdrawn. Defiles of the Rites who forsake the scribes for a profane monster. The Pyre Hearts. Once known for their spirit and bravery, now a craven laughingstock. Chastity. Corrupted opportunists who mean to use the rights for selfish gain. The Accusers. Their righteous traditions have given way to ruthlessness and spite. And way at the bottom. Um, wait, no, not at the bottom. Um, because Chastity has not won once. They are 0-8. <laughs> um, but at the bottom of the list, um, they must have started from the bottom, um, is the Temper is prideful, having prevailed more than all Tremorants combined, despite the fact that you are literally at the bottom of the ladder currently. Interesting. Okay, so as it stands, the Essence are in the lead. Interesting. So we have three to choose from, it would seem. We can fight the dissidents, who if they said don't care about what is at stake. We can fight the really evil snake ladies, or we can fight the harps. Okay, so three teams that all are a little bit sketchy. Um, I feel like they're they're like the Krogan in that they've done really bad things. That doesn't necessarily mean they are the most evil they ever are. These guys are actively working to bring back evil god lady. And these guys are just a-holes. So why don't I just want to make sure that we keep these guys in the dirt. <laughs> um I feel like they deserve. I don't want any of them getting liberated. Is is the is the thing. So I want to kick their butts now. Um, but yeah.